Hi fellow tennis nerds and welcome to the Tennis Nerd Podcast. In this episode, I talked to Ricardo Dacor from Dacor Tennis. He is a serial entrepreneur who is now moving into the tennis industry. He's creating custom rackets, bags, shoes, you name it. He also has his own uh, tennis academy with a lot of tennis courts, smart courts, and so on. And he's really adamant at changing the tennis industry in his own way. He has big plans, big dreams, and he's, he seems able to execute them one by one. I was really impressed and intrigued to talk to Ricardo. And uh, I really enjoyed the chat. He's quite an inspiring person. And if you're into kind of branding and business, you should listen to this one. Uh, I hope you really like it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis. P.S. I'm sorry about the sound when when I'm talking because I forgot to set up Skype so that it records from my microphone instead of the computer. Uh, but luckily, Ricardo is the, the guy doing most of the talking here, so that's a bit more interesting to listen to. But I just wanted to put that out there so you know why my voice sounds like I'm talking in a tunnel. How are you doing? I'm uh, good, and you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's been uh, it's been uh, busy times, a lot of work. But yeah, you, you probably have a lot more than I do. <laughs> it depends. No, <laughs> uh, the I've been uh, I've been uh, working a lot lately. Of course, with the the academy, it's it's a lot of work. I decided to to do the performance this year instead of next year. So it's it's uh, been crazy times. Uh, but I keep playing two hours a day. So. I can't complain. <laughs> you still play two hours every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's two great. hours every day. How, how, yes. does your, how does your body hold up for playing so much tennis? Perfect, perfect. Uh, I um, I spent some time working, warming up, warming down, stretching. So it's it's basically I'm protecting myself from uh, injuries uh, and especially. I don't want to end up uh, getting injured and uh, stop playing for uh, one week or one month. I would end up uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's uh, my fear as well. If you're gone for a few weeks, it's it's very depressing. No, uh, for me, if I if I had the the slinger machine and the and the academy for myself during the lockdown, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I don't even imagine how how things uh, could be because it, it would be terrible. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's uh, it's exactly what I like to do. So I I can't complain. I'm working so hard, and it's really it's really great to work in tennis. So I cannot complain. Definitely. No, it always helps when you work with your passion. I think that's uh, that's number one. And how good is that slinger machine? Is it uh, something I should consider? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, surprisingly, I was not expecting to be so demanding. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I never thought it could be useful for uh, professional players. Listen, so so you can understand how difficult it is. I played with the slinger on on the, my side of the court if i if i uh, play on the on the baseline on the other side of the court i expect that rafa nadal ball uh, should be like this oh wow. yes yes i i break strings in uh, less than 20 minutes it's wow. the heaviest ball you can imagine the Great. heaviest ball it's huge top spin okay that's that's a problem for uh, intermediate players uh, mm -hmm. and beginners. Uh, that could be a problem, of course, because they want to put the machine immediately on the maximum speed. And so I, wh what I do is I usually, uh, my favorite drills are like it's a hand uh, feeding. Okay. So it's, I love to do that. Even with coaches, I love to practice uh, like that technique. Uh, so it's it's a, it, it, it's perfect. You you I place the the machine uh, exactly uh, for uh, the specific drill I want to make uh, really fast to move the machine, okay? Um, and I can do the scheme so also the X uh, and uh, and uh, and and so it, it it's really fun. It, it's really fun to practice, but you need to keep uh, playing with people, practicing with people, okay? 
Yes, it's unbelievable. I was, I became super strong on the machine for mm -hmm. the for the lockdown. <laughs> really, it was thousands of balls. I can I can tell you that I learned one-handed back cam during this period. Uh, wow. and, and, I, and now I don't want anything else with <laughs> so it's 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 been uh, amazing working with the machine but I lost all my uh, leg power oh you you cannot imagine um, I thought I I spent two months without practicing tennis but now that I'm I'm back in I'm getting back on track and I feel that that I'm now I'm completely as I was before the lockdown in terms of energy and uh, and leg uh, power. I see the, all the effort I put in the, with the slinger during the lockdown on on my strokes, especially on the forehand because it was it was by far the 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 the, the most improvement I made. But people knew me with two-handed backhand before <laughs> before the lockdown. Now I only play with one-handed. It's 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 fun to tell this story because it's uh, it was a lot of time with the machine by myself. Now I'm a, I'm really I I don't play with the machine for uh, maybe two weeks. I'm <laughs> I was a little bored just to look at the machine, but now next week I will be back uh, doing doing the same thing, play, practicing with the um, with partners and also with the machine, but not every day. Not every day, okay. It uh, it can be too addictive, addictive. So then you stop you stop calling to your <laughs> calling your friends to play with. So no, but but uh, I definitely uh, recommend the the machine uh, for uh, for most of the types of players. Mm -hmm. Definitely, okay. But uh, professional players, uh, it, it, it's extremely useful because if you if you can hit those balls i think you can hit any other type of ball the, uh, the the ones from the baseline on the maximum speed it's huge heavy top speed uh, uh it's it's uh it's extremely extremely demanding to to play okay so it's uh um, we are going to use the the DTC as the as the uh, we are going to use the slinger as the official ball machine uh, for our uh, DTC. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's been great and people love it. People used to watch me using it when I was part of the focus group uh, and uh, always asked me about the price. And surprisingly, when I say the price, people say wow because they are used to see ball machines uh, for the double or triple of the the price right yeah, exactly. so, so this ball is ex this ball machine is extremely uh, also easy to use because you just close the the back put on the on your car and then it's it's just like a trolley a trolley uh, and the and the battery is the is uh, great also so it i definitely recommend and when you come and when you come to Portugal to visit the DTC, you you if you don't test it sooner, you <laughs> you will like it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it sounds like a great invention. I think. I mean, I've been waiting to see someone come up with something with a, with a kind of more affordable approach, but and a pretty and a better price because a lot of the other, like you said, the other other machines are quite expensive. So it's not really feasible for a lot of players to just buy it for their own practice, you know, and then just rent a court and go there with a ball machine, you know. Yes, and you need to bring your bag with the rackets, you need to bring the bag, the, the ball bag, you need to, it's a, a completely different logistic, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's extremely practical, it's, uh, that's the, one of the other reasons that I like. Of course, it has a few things that I would uh, uh, change. Uh, and as part of the focus group, I I've made my uh, comments, uh, remarks. So uh, we are working together. So it's something that you you can expect in a in a short period of time. Uh, our decor version of the slinger bag. It's something that uh, not only the materials but also the technology will uh, be upgraded a lot. 
okay, using our uh, resources. So I'm I'm excited to to also work with them. Um, that's something that we made officially a couple of days ago, and and uh, it's going to be great. That sounds great. No, it's a it's a great machine, and for your for your academy approach, how's yes. it going with the academy? Are you um, how many courts do you have, and, and what's what's happening there? We have fourteen courts. Uh, we have uh, four clay court indoor. Uh, we have two outdoor, uh, two clay court outdoor, and uh, then all our our court. We are about to to cover three hard courts uh, by the end of the year when we when we open uh, the performance institute. Uh, so basically, um, that's uh, what we have for the first stage. Uh, for the second stage, uh, we will have more courts uh, on the same uh, um, facilities, but there are a few there are a few particularities that I think it's it will become really in, uh, innovative in uh, in the tennis industry on those new courts that we are going to to develop and build. Yeah, that, that's kind of you. You're planning to do kind of a technical uh, approach to it, right? As far as I understand. Uh, the, no, the, 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 technic, the, the technology, it will be uh, used on these uh, courts, on the, the, the courts that we already have. We, we, we will have two smart courts and um, one for the public, another one for uh, performance. But we, by the end of the year, we will uh, uh, use our artificial intelligence technology. So basically any court will be a smart court. Okay, so it, it's not about where you are, but what you'll have in, uh, in the court. And, uh, and uh, it can be a Dakar racket with, the, with that technology. We call it NI, um, NI technology. It's artificial intelligence technology. And uh, basically what we are going to do is to uh, with the use of uh, a specific uh, technology, we are we are going to make any racket uh, immediately with a smart sensor, uh, smart court, and OK, OK eye features. So it's it's we are talking about <laughs> something extraordinary. Okay, so the, the I don't know if uh, I, I explain myself very well, but that's something that you can actually use with a with a standard Dakar racket in the in the near future. Uh, but also, we will have uh, an add-on that you can put in a different racket. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a Dakar racket to use the, those features on uh, on uh, on the court. Okay, so it's something that uh, we are really excited. It's patented already. Uh, three weeks ago, we decided to 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 make it public. Uh, so that's why we share the logo and uh, the the message that uh, this uh, technology will allow that, that almost that uh, that racket see, listen, and talk with you. So it's it 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 will be fun. It will be fun. Those other courts that we are building, basically, uh, and I don't want to talk too much about that, uh, but uh, it's we are going to re recreate here in the same facilities, different environments. Okay, so <laughs> it's not just about how many courts, but how the courts will uh, be. You understand, Jonas? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so I can tell you one court, uh, like uh, it will be like a Wimbledon court. So you can <laughs> now visualize the, the rest of the, the picture. So, but it's, uh, it's something that uh, we are really um, looking forward to, to tell more, but it's too soon just to unveil too much, you see? Yeah, no, I, of course. I mean, it's, uh, you, you're doing so much work on trying to kind of innovate 
the industry with the you know custom rackets and and the all kinds of products you're doing and and technical gadgets. I think that sounds really interesting because I I, I could see a lot of pro players wanting to uh, find like kind of a way to simulate uh, a, a court before they head, enter a tournament. You know. Yes. Yes. Okay. You. <laughs> that's the that's the picture. You you understood it perfectly. That's the picture. Okay. But in a, in a controlled uh, environment. So yeah. it's it. Basically, even that it's this second stage of the, the project, it's in the same facilities, it will not be op really open to the public, okay? It's, yeah. it's much more on that professional uh, uh, direction, okay? So, of course, with time, we will open to uh, that those uh, specific experience to the customer in general, okay? Because if... if we have uh, 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 the courts free, and it and uh, we, and we can organize uh, th that experience without uh, um, disturbing any professional while they are practicing. We we definitely will do it. We'll do it. I think one of the things that motivate me to do this project is bring more experience to 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 the public in general because I would love as a customer to hit with a pro if I could, right? Or to or to try the Australian Open uh, surface or try the Wimbledon uh, uh, surface. So it's basically when I post sometimes that we are building the Disneyland for the tennis uh, fans, that's the overall uh, concept. It's uh, people come here and they will have all sorts of uh, experience that they are not used to to have or they never had before in their lives. So you can be here and you can visit our fitting center. You can be here and test old prototypes that we have done and know their history. But you can also try prototypes under development. So it's and you can speak with players. You can see players, uh, professional players playing. So there are tons of things that people are not used to to see or to try that they will uh, for sure uh, try uh, this year later this year okay so we are we were about to make the grand opening in July but it will be a soft opening uh, because it's not uh, this uh, lockdown affects uh, everyone uh, and so it doesn't make sense making any kind of party or official. <laughs> uh, event in a uh, while there are so many people still suffering and uh, in panic. So we expect to make that happen in September, but we can we can go till October. So then it's about time to make it official, as it can be. Okay, so that's the update on the on the on the the, the Dakar Tennis Center. Yeah, besides the, the center, which looks, which sounds and, and looks from what I've seen on your Instagram and uh, Facebook, looks really amazing. Uh, how, how's the work going with, with the rackets and bags and stuff? And, and how do you have time for all this? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, finalizing the, all of the new product range regarding the frames. So we, we are, uh, there are a few customers already that, uh, that are trying the new frames. They bought the new frames. They are the first customers in the world to have it, because we made a secret, uh, a secret, uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, let's say, menu on the website, mm -hmm. where people that uh, that uh, got there had the chance to be the first customers to buy. Uh, order of course the um, the these new frames so we are about to launch from 93 square inch frame till the 115 square inch frame uh, in a total of uh, 16 uh, frames with uh, any custom uh, <laughs> possibility available so it's it's uh, a lot of work but it's not something that I've been doing it for the last two months it's it's a uh, ongoing work since day one so i i opted to launch only four frames 
so it could be such a an, a, an extreme uh, universe of possibilities because we we were dealing already with billions of cosmetic options so uh, i tried to 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 build a strategy that could have more focus on the quality and on the variety of designs so now it's something that uh, will become uh, really extreme also technically wise so it's uh, of course we we are going to have a different way to to show the those all of those options because if you're a tennis nerd like we are <laughs> we we can uh, have access to all of the frames but if you just want to 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 choose uh, with the intermediate level of uh, knowledge you you will maybe see only five types of frames so it's it's basically something that i really believe that will uh, satisfy com completely satisfy the um, uh, uh, tennis nerds like uh, like ourselves because the you can do whatever you want from any kind of uh, idea crazy idea that uh, you can uh, come up to come up with so it's uh, it's fun to give this uh, this uh, offer, special offer. But I've been also working uh, a lot in uh, on the new uh, on the new core of our rackets. Okay, so it's something that uh, that uh, I believe in two three months will be will be out. Also, we are going to use uh, uh, something completely uh, innovative. Okay, so as you know very well, we already use high energy foam. It's very similar to 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 other foams that are on the market right now. And but to, even that you use it differently, as with a solid mold, um, that was not innovative enough for my for what I really want to to introduce to the market. So uh, maybe something that has been used in the past really long long time ago it's <laughs> it will be used again in uh, in all of our frames so it's something that uh, tests are uh, are uh, without a uh, question uh, great so far so that's uh, that's something that i believe in two three months i will start to advertise and, and uh, to show it to the public okay um so on the rackets and uh, that's basically that's it on the other products we, oh, we were about to launch everything in uh, the bios in uh, march uh, by the end of march uh, but then the lockdown came all the factories start, in portugal start to produce masks and and uh, you name it everything had to do with the with the with the with the pandemic so uh officially we we are back on track since yesterday monday so no more masks now in the factories and we are going to 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 the apparel bags and shoes right now okay so it's something that i look forward because it's uh it's uh it's uh more than two years of uh, work developing the what, what i believe in my perspective in my opinion the my dream products okay so they i i i could have launched it way sooner but uh, it was never there was something that uh, like little details that were not exactly like like i wanted but now it's all fixed and uh, I believe that uh, I have molds for uh, many, many years. We don't have to ch to to come up with different molds. Uh, we we might be, uh, develop, of course, um, uh, but not for this specific product. Okay, we'll we'll develop other products so with other molds. But um, I'm really looking forward. I'm really looking forward. I don't know if you remember. Uh, from one of our first conversations, our bags we will will have a uh, lifetime uh, warranty. So you can expect something uh, um, really, really well the, done, well produced. 
so that we can uh, give that to the to our customers. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, I, I remember that we talked about the bags, and it's. Um, I mean, you're you're really trying everything you can to try to find new angles on products and and innovate. And uh, I I really appreciate that. And you mentioned like you know um, thoughts you had when it all started. When when did it all start? Like if we move back in time a little bit, like how did you? get this idea to create your own brand and, and you know, how, how how much work have you put in along the way and uh, where do you see yourself kind of moving on after, uh, uh-huh. you know, years? Well, um, it all started much before thinking in uh, in uh, having my own brand and launch uh, a, a tennis brand. Uh, it, it, it started... Uh, I'm a what it's called a late bloomer. <laughs> I, I only play tennis uh, for a, uh, almost it, it, in this October it makes six years that I play tennis. So I play basketball basketball all my life and uh, and one day after a really a random day in my life I I grabbed the racket for the first time. I was 37 years old. <laughs> And uh, and uh, it was a magical moment. I I I moved from a situation that I hated tennis just by watching it. It looked so bored to me that I I couldn't even stand looking more than two or three seconds from being completely completely crazy about this sport. So from uh, from that moment. That I took the uh, the record for the uh, grabbed the record for the first time. It was uh, practice and learning the game every single day. So it um, it has been uh, lots of hours, lots of hours. What I've been what I practice in six years, maybe it's the same that uh, m- many people uh, played for uh, decades. Believe me. So in a specific moment of uh, while I was learning the game. The, the the sport uh, I thought that I could have extra help from the gear so because I was hungry for to learn the sport as fast as as it could be uh, possible of course but in a specific moment I was trying too hard and the gear w- was not doing anything for me so I start doing what any tennis nerd uh, does, uh, studying, studying, reading, reading, <laughs> seeing videos, seeing. So it's, it, it was a lot of research. I start to building my, my own, my own uh, equipment, of course, in an amateur uh, way of doing that. Um, and um, one till one day that I couldn't stand the idea of not working in tennis. And I'm not talking about having a tennis club. That's something that I don't. I don't like it. I would never. It never was a, a possibility in my in my mind or having a different uh, profession. So I went straight to uh, to thinking how could I be part of the industry. So it all started with strings, and then okay, why don't I? Why don't over grips? Why don't ball? So it was basically while I was building the business plan, it was basically basically product by product, and it stopped with the records. Okay, so I may I build a business plan without records because I thought it would be impossible to produce records. Um, so from <laughs> but then that was missing. <laughs> there was something really missing on the business plan and. A tennis brand without without the racket, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So I basically uh, study how to produce records. I traveled a lot. I visit uh, all the factories. Uh, I learn how to how to to develop molds and and frames and prototypes. So it was uh, I can it was almost uh, I can tell you from the from starting my experience with the gear, learning the, the, the process of uh, producing my own gear to develop the first prototypes, it took less than two years, uh, less than two years. But then I think I produced uh, at least 400 
different rackets before uh, uh, before I launched the, the core. So it was a it was a great process. Uh, I work fast. I have a good team behind me. I have good uh, good uh, factories inside this project. So it's very important for me to explain that. And uh, so it was uh, it was something that uh, I definitely. Uh, don't regret to to do it. I don't. I don't think the brand could be this brand uh, with all the products uh, and not having the the records. It's uh, all of the all of the 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 magic of tennis starts on with with the record. So <laughs> that's that was how uh, it all started. Um, and uh, and when I what I see. The, the the future uh, uh, exactly uh, doing this exactly doing this it's uh, uh, it's uh, my mindset is is uh, is focused every day in innovation and in serving our customers exactly like they want to be served so if if uh, if we keep this uh, innovation going like we are we are doing right now and with the focus on serving the the client's needs, it's something that I I can tell it will be a good future for sure. So it's it, it's something that uh, it fuels our passion every day. The feedback from customers, um, only thank, uh, appreciating and, and and thanking us for, to do exactly what they want. So that's why I I made a post today and I, and I told. Uh, um the future if the future tells me that uh, i can we can sell products without our logo type for a specific customer or customers we will do it we will do it uh, it's it's something if the client wants that's exactly what they do because we don't market our products or uh um that way we don't need the products to 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 sell the core we just need to focus on what our clients want and uh, and they are the, the the ones that they will spread the message so but of course i'm just telling you how extreme we go uh, uh, respecting our our uh, customer okay but quality and uh, innovation must be the the the, the foundation of, of of this brand of course yeah well, when you were um Starting out in tennis, what were you, you know, when you were uh, looking into racket strings and, and other tennis gear, what was the thing that you felt was lacking and not giving you, what did you really want to change? What was your kind of frustration with the uh, gear? That you okay, okay. Frustrations for me uh, started with the, with the professionals. Okay, so I trust a lot. When when we are uh, new in the in a sport, we need to trust the professionals. That th those that gives you gives you the uh, their advices, right? So it's very important, and you work a lot on that type of uh, content. It's very important for us to play with our uh, with the, the 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 most suitable gear according to your tennis tennis level, right? So. For me, the most the first frustration I found was the lack of knowledge from all of uh, or for most from most of the professionals they, that I was dealing with. I'm talking about clubs. I'm talking about stores. I'm talking about coaches. So, and that didn't happen uh, for a reason. That that happened for a reason because uh, they don't have uh, information available since. Early, uh, I believe, 2000, 2001, most of the, these uh, professionals uh, stopped having education, let's, uh, uh, or courses from the uh, from the tennis brands. Okay, so they were keep advising with information they had since the 80s and 90s. So they were completely obsolete. So, so for me, it was. Uh, it was the first frustration. No one could effectively help me. Okay, that's that's for sure. So I can tell you, I was in my second year. I was playing with the with the with a racket that uh, was uh, 
333 grams. So it's, it, it, we are 1820 string pattern. So we, we are talking about something that that was not really helping me to to achieve what I wanted. Even that, uh, even that I was a, a late learner. <laughs> Man, I I told everyone I want to be the best player I can be in five years. So I I had th these goals. So really ambitious goal. So uh, that was the, the first frustration and that took me to the Google road, YouTube, uh, uh, but may, uh, mostly websites of experts and people like you, bloggers that that put their content online and help anyone, if they really want to, to learn at least the basics, at least the basics. But the second frustration um, and I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't spend too much time talking about the, 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 what is, what, what the market has to offer, but I can talk, speak about myself and my experience. Um, I struggle, I, I, uh, I felt that the quality was not, the quality of the products was not that good. Uh, especially when I bought uh, one thermo bag and two rackets uh, package for 600 euros, it's a lot of money. I, I need to expect that at least the quality um, is there. Uh, and in my perspective, it wasn't, especially the lack of quality control. Okay, uh, and and that was something that it was the second when I when I start to, to realize that all those informations that weren't accurate, that was wow! How, 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 can, how can this be possible? That's why you that's why you see so much focus uh, uh, of, uh, on our side uh, uh, with the, with the NFC ship. The NF, we we can put those tiny letters in any record if you want it. <laughs> we do things so uh, so difficult that those small numbers and letters, it's so easy to put on a record, even do it by hand. But but that doesn't make sense. So our focus in the in bringing transparency to the market uh, and, 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 and when I say a gram is a gram, one inch is an inch, that's something that I truly believe that makes a difference for a any player that wants at least wants to compete at least wants to compete okay because one anyone that uh, an avid player a, a recreational player but that competes and i'm not talking further than that uh at least has two records so for me the records not being matched since the the, the order it's something that never made uh, sense to me um so uh, that's what that was the, the second uh, frustration. The third one was the durability. Durability. Uh, I'm talking about uh, um, shoes. I'm talking about strings. I'm talking about uh, uh, even rackets because there are uh, uh, most of the rackets that you that that uh, are available to the market. Uh, are basically the same, the, the same materials, the same resin, the same uh, mold. So it's it's. But you end up to see one selling for six euros and another one internally exactly the same for a, a double or triple of the price. And 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 you cannot expect that, or they shouldn't uh, last the same in terms of the carbon fatigue. And, and and it's exactly the same. So when you start practicing a lot like I did and improving my game, I started immediately to realize that that there was a lot of fatigue on the on the on the rackets, uh, and uh, and uh, that was something that it, since day one I tried to avoid. I tried to avoid developing all the products, no matter. No matter the tennis level of our customers, all the problem, the products have the same materials and the same technology. It's 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 uh, it doesn't make sense 
um, not having this. So it's 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 not a a, a question of uh, of uh, of selling more or less. For me, it doesn't matter. Uh, it does have nothing to do with the with the with profit. It's just a, a, a statement that that's where we want to be in a niche market that will appreciate our uh, uh, transparency in terms of quality and durability. That's something that I'm really uh, focused. So that's that's basically um, the. The, the frustration, those three uh, biggest frustrations I had, um, nothing more. And of course, the other one, the other one uh, is is also important because it's something that we 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 do a lot. Uh, what the biggest pain point in other brands, and I'm talking as a customer because I was a a really good customer during this uh, <laughs> during this tennis uh, life. Um, was the customer service and especially the brand experience. So, customer service, uh, I, I, I end up to, while I was doing my uh, customizations, I end up to need uh, spare parts from uh, accessories, grommets, bumpers, butt caps, uh, because you cannot uh, make... Uh, so much modifications on a frame without having new new accessories. So it, it was extremely difficult to get those uh, sort of, uh, uh, of accessories if it wasn't the, the, the latest model. Uh, so I end up writing to the brands. No one uh, replied to me. Uh, one, but sometime I, I get an answer to tell me to speak with the, the national representative. I talk with the national representative, basically. He, what happened? He told me to, after a few weeks, to to talk with the the official store in Portugal. <laughs> that was the start of my club. So it's basically I spend a lot of weeks to end up in my club, and they don't even know what a, a bumper or a grommet uh, was, and they were uh, the official store. So it's it's this was something that uh, it, it's it's. Uh, it, it it bothered me it bothered me a lot and uh, the customer the the brand experience also because I was uh, a, a really good customer of a specific brand okay really good <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, I would love to to use all the products from uh, for uh, from that brand uh, every day no one see me with two different brands I was wearing that brand every time so i was expecting much more from the the test days or from the tennis the experience that they provide when they launch new products i was expecting much more uh so and and that experience was basically you get, get to a to a specific club or court where it's all really nice and pretty with all the banners and the and the and the uh, the stand-ups with a nice stand, uh, but no, there was no, really, there was no uh, branding experience. You have a, a stand-up with the 12, 15 records, I don't remember, new models, and, and then you just pick one and you start hitting with it, with no consultation, no advice, no one would even say how much uh, what were the difference uh, compared to the previous models? I was, I end up uh, being there by myself, um, looking at all the specs and all the without uh, without no one explaining me whatsoever. So that was really frustrated because I really love that brand. Uh, but for me, it 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 also helped to build this experience that we provide every day to the customers and when i i believe in brands uh in branding most of anything but when i use my face on this project and you can see it on the website uh, with the record uh, in front of me it's to show people there at least there there is a face here and this face has a lot of passion for uh uh, for w w w what he's doing, 
and uh, people can talk to me, can engage with me. People, can, but but it's not a Ricardo project. This is a, 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 a this project was built for people like Ricardo. The, the, I know so many people like myself, entire world, so many people, and this project brought those people. Uh, 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 to this project and we are engaging people say thanks people say hi just to i don't have money right now to to buy your product but i just i just want to congratulate you guys you are doing a terrific job so this is exactly what i was expecting and uh, and it's magical these times are, are magical we, we are fueled every time by this kind of uh, emotions so it's really overwhelming uh, living this uh, uh, dream I can say it's 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 a dream that I'm living and uh, hopefully I I really hope to spread this uh, positive message that I have nothing to do with the uh, um, with the uh, problems and the complaint no no this is all positive uh, uh, message that we want to share and we I think in overall we are going to change the the the, the tennis in for a, a better uh, place and and I'm not and, and and what I feel is that I'm awakening and as a, the face of the core I'm awakening a lot of people that were in love with tennis but somehow they end up slipping the that 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 passion uh, and now they are uh, bringing back those uh, good emotions because this sport is amazing, and uh, it's it's it, it's one of the I don't know which I played basketball for uh, almost uh, 30 years and and I love basketball, uh, but this is a different thing. This is uh, this is an extraordinary sport, and uh, I love it. And everything we do here. We make sure that is done with the, with this passion, and that's why we we post so much, we put a lot of content uh, out there. We post so much. We 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 focus on on telling this story because uh, when I create this Mr. Dakar <laughs> uh, persona, uh, it's 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 just to uh, make sure that people, when they found out about the core, they can know more about what uh, motivate me to bring this project to life so basically that's it and i see the core being the best brand uh in the world uh, not the biggest brand i don't measure brands or companies by the number of sales really don't especially when we are talking about custom manufacturing uh and that's uh that's exactly what we want to be. So uh, the best brand in the in the in, in the tennis industry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I I I mean, being a passionate guy about tennis myself, as you know, uh, I really um, I'm really impressed by your dedication and the kind of you know effort you put into it. And I, I really agree with you on on many of the points you raised with with the issue of knowledge in the industry and the issue of quality control. I mean, when I started getting into tennis again after after many years off not playing I, I, and started getting really crazy about you know rackets and specs and and you know improving my technique etc and i was really surprised that there were so many issues when it comes to the products you know and that's kind of really helped me start tennis nerd as well so i think we share some of that uh, situation uh, obviously i mean you you uh, have must have come from some kind of entrepreneur business background before you started Dakor because you've, you've really made a clear business plan. You seem to have a really good strategy. You seem to have a good idea of, of brand management and creating a brand that delivers a promise. Uh, so what did you do before you, you started this business? Oh, well, I, I've been in startup li life, start life since my 20s. So it's uh, I've studied engineering management uh, and the first, uh, the first job experience uh, after three, four months, uh, it wasn't for me. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't just simply work for somebody else. It's, it's something that I learned really soon in my life. It was, uh, I was driven through 
passion. So we, what really motivates me is passion. So I need to really love what I'm doing. Uh, and if I'm not being uh, doing this work for a person that I really admire, it, I cannot uh, imagine uh, working for someone else. So my first experience, left, it was not the perfect uh, entrepreneur that was leading my 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 path. So it was uh, December 2002, uh, and I, w I, I was not married. I didn't have any child back then. So it was just calling my girlfriend and saying, OK, I have a good job here. And uh, <laughs> uh, but it's not. I I was not meant to do this. I need to I need to uh, to to stop for a while. And uh, and it took me one month to to create my first company. Uh, and uh, what I I was I spent my entire um, childhood in uh, uh, in uh, two companies. One of my mother and one from my father so they were already entrepreneurs since i remember so since really young age i was dealing with meetings and uh, visiting factories so i built uh, a specific know-how on a specific uh, industry um and uh, so i was a consultant for uh, that industry furniture industry and uh, I start working with a with a, a company from uh, Netherlands, Holland. So I learned a lot with the in that uh, working with that uh, company. Uh, so uh, then I start to move in different directions, creating company after company. So I had companies in the automotive area, inclusive a manufacture uh, a car manufacture project. Uh, I had the, I had the marketing companies digital uh, companies. So I, I had a, a lot of companies. I all started from scratch. So basically, I, I, I met during these two last decades, a lot of success, a lot of failures. Uh, I had everything in my life already. I lost everything in my life already. So basically, I'm right now the best version of Ricardo as an entrepreneur. That's what I really believe. So when you tell when you tell me that this business plan looks uh, solid, uh, I can tell you it's really solid. It's 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 something that, uh, and I'm not saying that in a like in a in a bad way. Like I'm uh, no, <laughs> I'm saying that uh, uh, because there's a lot of hard work, but a lot of experience. So it's 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 not just like let's try. I'm not trying. It's very important. I'm not trying. This is a matter of time just to get there. And uh, while I'm while I don't get there, I'm enjoying every single day. Uh, and when I say I get there, it's the point that this company and what it, what what the company offers to the public is uh, is uh, known to the world. You see, because I'm. I, I'm not uh, really in, her, in a hurry because things take time because I, I also need to adapt the, the internal structure, the factories accordingly to the, to the, the, to the company exposure, right? So, uh, and I want this to be contained, uh, a contained growing, but, but um, it, when I tell you it's the, my best version as a, uh, a, a startup guy, it, it is by far, by far. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm so focusing in um, in uh, in developing this branding as uh, we are doing because that's the the what separates us from the rest of the the market. It's the the passion and and the foundation how it all started because I can. Uh, 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 be uh, 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 the core can be a brand that can easily work uh, with uh, with other brands. So I, I'm not spending too much time talking about the other brands because in the future, who knows if we are going to to work together? 
I, I already have an offer from one brand to produce products for, the, for the, that specific brand. And I said no because it, it wasn't the right approach. But, but I, I can tell you that uh, I see easily this brand growing uh, and not producing more than uh, 3,000 records per year. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's a really small number. But that's that's exactly what I want to 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 place this brand like it was a, a, an exclusive car brand like manufacturer like Bugatti. I'm always talking about Bugatti uh, because I want I want to bring that experience and to provide only uh, uh, the highest possible uh, quality in the products because you can you can't get there in China. You, it's impossible, and, and listen, and Chinese uh, professionals are great professionals, but they don't have quality control. It's impossible. Quality control would be much more expensive than, than producing <laughs> records. It's 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 it's, it's different uh, in nature. So we when we produce everything in Portugal, is to make sure that our factory stops just to provide you a product for Jonas. We know our clients' names. We we talk with our customers. We engage and we tell them, we don't need, uh, we hope that you can buy a second or a third record in three, four years. And when you do that, everybody still remember your name. And we have your the specifications from the record you bought. So it's sold internally. So that's something that it's really fa uh, fascinating for us because we are probably uh, we probably say that for us any custom is uh, Roger Federer. So we, you have the, the Roger Federer's perks through the core, right? So basically, it, that's uh, uh, something that uh, I see myself doing uh, for decades. This is. The, the the goal the it's building a, um, a forever brand that's the only thing that I want to do okay so yeah <laughs> that thinking uh, that every customer is a uh, Roger Federer because I think that's uh, that's a promise to the customer and, and says a lot about uh, you know the time you dedicate because as you yes. said about <laughs> about quality control is that uh, it takes a lot more time and uh, yes, yes, yes. it's a racket it's 100 true because then you have to have more man hours Ooh, and, man, and hours man, man hours and and all the timing because it's really fast to produce records in china i don't know if you if you know but producing they can produce thousands per day and strong records i'm not talking just the frame i'm talking it's insane that their capacity is huge okay but but the molds they use, they shouldn't be producing more than, okay, let's say 100 records per mold, okay? So when you start producing 1,000 records or more per mold, what, and what you end up having is the first frame has completely different specs from the, the last one. You see? So it's not just balance and weight. It's, it's a lot of... Things. It's two completely different records. So imagine that they have quality control. The factory would stop maybe one month only to <laughs> to to match the specifications. And you cannot match specifications, or, or you can, but even that the, the records have the same balance, same swing weight, same weight, the feeling, it's not the same. Of course, most of the people don't have that knowledge or, or feeling to understand it and to, and to immediately notice, but it's impossible. That's why we try to keep this business as small as we can. I'm, I'm all, but of course, being a global business, but there are a lot of ways to grow this business without having to lose the quality control. And one of the things that I'm doing right now, and I can, and I can tell you, I, I, we will lead the distribution. And so we will have in our plan for the next years, starting this year, we will have distribution, our own distribution centers with 
the core tennis center. So this will all be a, a unique concept. We will have in eight, nine different countries, uh, of course, in the best markets, okay? We will have a Dakar Tennis Center, a Dakar Fitting Center, a Dakar Performance Institute, and what I, what I call the Disneyland, the so, all the social experience in the same place. So it's all about making this uh, uh, racket and all the products uh, a sale and experience selling and experience and so when you come to the fitting center you need to book you will be received re welcome just like you were roger federer and i and i can assure you that um and you can see all the materials you can see all the the the, the molds but i'm talking about from shoes to rackets it's and 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 we will build an entire collection just for you with your we can scan your your feet we can we can take all the measures uh, from your body like a, uh, like a tailor we can we will do an ultimate custom uh, customization experience controlling the process it will be our professionals doing that so um that takes time so if we take time to produce, we will make this uh, a unique ex experience from day one to the to the last when we deliver all the products, and we have more time for for ourselves, and we will keep the production levels really low. Okay. So when I say three thousand uh, records per year, we already sold uh, one thousand two hundred records in in uh, one year and uh, a half and so it's it's basically i don't see myself taking this uh, company to to number to crazy numbers you know why because i spent 2000 euros in four years when uh, when i was a customer from another brand so if i have 500000 customers it's one billion euros, so it's <laughs> you can have a huge business, a huge business without having thousands of uh, thousands of uh, or millions of uh, products in uh, production. You, I think you, it's it's a clear picture, but it 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 I, I, with that with those numbers, I can immediately say I we don't need to go that far to have a great. Uh, uh, a unicorn company we don't we don't need to produce millions but we need to of course control the distribution uh after we uh, 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 produce all the products so it's not just just uh finding distributors or ages no it's it's something that i think that will be the ultimate control of uh, all of these experiences is being the core uh, professionals, own professionals doing this uh, distribution worldwide. So that was uh, uh, very important for me to explain you how we will distribute. Because as you as you might guess, I we receive tons of emails from many many countries. Can I be a distributor? I want to buy one thousand records. I want to buy. Uh, <laughs> I have those emails. So it's because people they are used to a a different business model and man and 1000 records i could easily produce i don't want to do that i don't want to do that and and if people write me and tell me that they do they want to do that is because they didn't spend two three minutes in the website because they did if they did they already knew that i would say no this is a custom made uh, experience so it's 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 a made to measure it's not even our shelf products, Jonas, because we are going to have shelf products, okay? Small uh, production runs, really small, okay? Um, uh, even though they are produced and they are on the shelf, you can also customize it because we will have a, on our fitting center uh, a technology that allows us to put your, uh, to put your signature, to choose the grip, uh, size and type to choose the balance to choose the weight so 
basically we will we will have air pins there with uh, with different cosmetics it's a it's also a great experience because most of the people that you you, you know the market much better than i do uh most of the people don't want to go that extreme in customization right so it's it, it makes sense that we, we can have shelf products but with five seven maybe ten customization or personalization options to 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 sell and to deliver right away so that's something i really believe that uh, also will uh, will uh, help us uh, grow uh in 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 the market so uh that's it uh, about this uh this vision and what uh, what i think the core will be so i just keep going i don't see myself doing anything else so <laughs> it's my passion and uh, i want to i spent 40 years doing other other things and i want to spend my the second stage of my life my next 40 years uh doing only this developing researching creating and uh, and being the face that uh, and and i i i'm positive about that the face that uh, has um, started a movement an innovation movement that will disrupt the the industry and i'm talking about uh, i'm talking about product industry i'm talking about the academy industry I'm talking about the technology industry uh, and also about the social, the, the tennis social industry. I think what I what I have planned, and you will know uh, very soon what uh, what uh, will be. But the plan is to lead those four axes, to lead. Okay, so um, I think we are in a very good spot to do that, um, and uh, and uh, I'm. Uh, I'm really proud uh, from what we are all doing here. Uh, all the team, all the people that are working with us, all the all the manufacturers that uh, believe me, not since day one, but <laughs> because uh, to produce in Portugal, all these products you need to be annoying to convince these people to stop their production lines to to <laughs> to produce a, a pair of shoes for Jonas. <laughs> so this this took a lot of lot of passion effort and knowledge to to convince these great people uh to work with the uh, work in for the core and uh that's something that i'm really proud to 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 achieve um, and without the staff and all these manufacturers behind this project it would be impossible to to do this extreme uh service and it, <laughs> it's crazy. Just the rackets, it's crazy. But doing extreme personalization in all the products, it's uh, <laughs> it's out of uh, out of uh, out of the our mind. So it's uh, yeah. it's fun, fun times. Yeah, it's uh, it's really impressive, and I, I like that you keep on thinking about new ideas and not just stop at, at what you already. No, 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 no. That's, uh, that's really good. Uh, by the way, I mean, do you, are you watching any tennis? Do you have time for that? Are you following like the exhibitions that's going on now? Or I gotta be honest. For two things, the first, yeah, I'm I I I didn't have time to 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 watch it. Basically, what I'm doing is just following uh, uh, footage that is shared on uh, on uh, social media. And the second uh, and the, the the second thing I need to tell is I don't see myself for the next two three months uh, having time to just sit down and, and watch a good game uh, that's something that uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm so uh, focused now uh, doing this that I don't have time just to watch a, a tennis uh, game but but I'm just talking about the next two three months because corona the, the lockdown uh, made made an in a global impact in everyone in every company and uh, and it took us, it has slowed us down. So now, we, now that we are back uh, working together, uh, we need to to accelerate even more to compensate uh, some time that we lost. We, we lost definitely some time because uh, it, it, we were in a lockdown. So it's, it's, 
uh, we move forward in a lot of things, but we we slow a few down. So it's it's now it's time to wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. At 6 a.m. in the morning, I already made a few posts and answered a few emails. So it's it's all about now it's uh, full speed, uh, having my time for the family, having my time for tennis. Two hours, it, <laughs> I must have that time. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense working in tennis if you don't have fun with tennis. But so, there are some things that I need to just not thinking. And one of one of uh, those things is watching tennis that I love. Of course, I love. I'm a crazy Roger Federer fan. I love uh, uh, Roger Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic the same. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, of the, all the ATP tournaments, but now it's it's time to to stop watching tennis for a while. Of course, there are not enough matches to to make <laughs> to make me lose the this focus and watch the the game because it's exhibition matches. But um, but I think in two three times I'll be back on my usual rhythm. Um, and I'll have my own time to watch the, the games because I love to. It's part of what I love to do in my life. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to to be there again on my couch watching a good match. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking about because I was I was myself watching a bit of the Ultimate Tennis Showdown. I'm not sure if you've seen that uh, where they have a lot of rule changes. They do like uh, a match in four quarters. It's time based. Mm-hmm. And you uh, you count points. So the one with the most points at the end of a quarter, uh, he wins that quarter. And if it's uh, two all, uh, they play a tiebreaker. And then mm-hmm. they have these cards where you can introduce like, oh, I, I'm gonna steal your serve. So they get they usually have two serves each, but then they steal a serve, so they get two additional serves. They, they use that card kind of like a video game. And um, they they're really trying to speed up tennis. They have 15 seconds before you have to serve and so on. Just wondering if, if you think in general that tennis needs to change a bit to be more interesting for the, okay. for the players. Uh, I, in a social uh, perspective, I, I, I think that those are good ideas, but I love the tennis game exactly how it is. I, I cannot, I think innovation needs to, it doesn't have to do with the, with the, with the, the tennis sport. Okay. For me, the, the, the the rules, okay, maybe a few small things that can be changed in a, in a good way. But what fascinates me so much is the, 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 the tennis, how it was till now, really. The scoring, the, the, all the, the number of games, everything. The, I wouldn't change, in my perspective, I wouldn't change absolutely nothing. Okay, that's uh, because you might... Uh, you might conquer a few new fans, uh, I believe, with the with the, the sport being faster and uh, and more supposedly more exciting or more easy to watch. Uh, but you will lose a ton of uh, of uh, fans. Uh, that's that. Uh, I think the sport in general will. Uh, uh, increase it, 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 its fan base, not through this, uh, the, through the, the the sport itself. I think the biggest problem is starts in companies just like Dakar. We need to the the responsibility to bring uh, 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 new fans to the game and new players to the game is ours the the comp- the record companies the tennis clubs and all of these uh, tennis professionals coaches other players you 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 need to act as one when, and 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 because the on the end of the day everybody wins because i know that i don't think that i that there are too many people Serving the tennis industry, they don't like tennis. No, most of the people love tennis. Otherwise, they they were not uh, uh, in the in this industry. But what I think, and I feel that 
and I have uh, some testimonials, that people start getting used to the same things. And I'm not talking about the rules. I'm talking about all of the venues, all of the, the, the products, all of the, the clubs. People become less energetic. You don't see coaches pushing their, uh, uh, their uh, uh, services. You don't see other players bringing friends. And it's, it's all the society needs new measures to, to, to attract people to this uh, great sport. So that's why I think, okay, we need to do our, our, our job because if we need to do our job, and I'm seeing, uh, Jonas, I see in social media the, the people that look at what we do since, I told you, since 5 a.m. in the morning till midnight, we are always engaging on social media. And I'm, I've been seeing other companies, and, and, and including racket brands, including uh, 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 other uh, tennis companies, and, and including clubs. I've seen a lot of people now and organizations doing much more work on social media. And just talking about tennis, not buy this product. Buy. If you notice, you, you never saw any post, the core post selling it telling buy this, buy that. No, we we on the end of the day, what we are doing is selling the sport. And because I really believe that we sell the sport with the, our passion, and it's a true passion. I can uh, assure you that it's it's that's why it doesn't uh, uh, represent any demanding effort posting. It's just natural content that we put out there. But on the end of the day, if we do this and keep doing this with this kind of intensity, people that buy the car, we will be the ones that will uh, spread the, the, this message and bring new people uh, to this fan, uh, tennis fan base, global fan base. I really believe this. So I think uh, the word, the proper word might not be inspiring. But we are leading, showing that we are hard workers, that we love tennis. We are leading other companies and other smaller organizations to also be more active, spreading this, uh, this passion uh, uh, from this sport. So I think in generally, there is a lot of things that needs to change. And when I talk about leading one of those axes that I told you about, the innovation, I'm talking about making this sport uh, updated to the real world, and this real world is is uh, is apps, is uh, smart uh, uh, technology, and I'm talking about really smart technology. It's not just a sensor telling you how many forehands you hit and what was the speed. That's not really smart because that's not new technology. That's really old technology. Smart is is you grabbing a racket and you enter in a court and you can play a game with a, a live game like with the with a player that is in Portugal or is in China or is in and 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 uh, so that is something extraordinary or you using the racket and you choose the the which in the application which forehand you like to to re replicate and you choose Rogers Federer uh, Federer uh, uh, forehand and then the uh, the artificial intelligence with your uh, with your high pots um, uh, here pots or will tell you exactly in real time what you should do in real time so you end up of course being close to his uh, technique and not having his uh, technique so this is what we are really investing a lot of time uh, we have three universities working with us from UK to Portugal. We have our own engineers, uh, artificial uh, in, intelligence uh, engineers working 24-7 uh, uh, on this. And man, it, 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 we will sell the sport through this type of gadgets and technologies because everything nowadays, it's on on your phone, on your app, and and not anymore on TV, not anymore on the sidelines of any court. So it's it it must be with the innovation 
towards this direction that you will end up bringing more people to the game. And when people fell in love with this game, you know, they would love to watch a five hour game between Roger Federer and Djokovic. No one will. I don't know any boring game. Of course, there are a few, but not in ATP or WTA. Any boring game that lasts so long. So this is has nothing to do with rules, of course. Maybe the tournament management, of course, so that the games don't last till 3 uh, a.m. in the morning, of course. That, that must be uh, a, a problem of the, the tournament uh, management. But the overall thing that I want to tell you is I love the rules of the game, the logical of the, the how it, uh, how, how the game, uh, all the game scores, everything. I love it. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, it's nice. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same. I'm just interesting to talk about these things. As it seems to have come up uh, a lot of discussions. Yes, 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 yes. Coronavirus thing, but uh, but I agree. I think the scoring system is tennis is is very unique, and you also have to respect the history of a sport that's been around for so long. I mean, you can't yeah yeah go too crazy and and not change anything. But I think the history and the the you know legends and um, the results that's been in the past you you in sport you need something to compare against to measure records and so on and to change yeah. you, you end up with a completely different sport, sport and you, exactly exactly uh, completely different sport yeah, exactly well ricardo uh, i know you're a very busy man and uh, you have a lot on your plate i was really <laughs> and and hear about the core and your visions and i think it's really inspiring Thank you to hear your uh, your attitude and your your positive uh, you know influence uh, on the sport already, so really keen and curious to see what you will do in the in the future, and uh, I hope we can keep in touch and uh, see where we go from there. It was uh, I'm, uh, I talk too much. It was a great uh, time uh, talking with you, Jonas. Um, and uh, let's uh, keep uh, let's keep uh, in uh, in touch. Uh, and uh, hopefully you will see a lot of things in uh, in the next few weeks that you, I'm pretty sure as a tennis fan that you will like uh, very much. I'm sure, I'm sure. All right. Take care, Ricardo. We keep in touch. Take care, Jonas. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye.